I welcome all of you uh, to the Hatsa trainings and uh, we are attending, attending this session for the Appen training. So before we start, so um, let's have, uh, you know, kind of uh, intro session. So Trini, what about you? Um, are you experienced or under pressure? All right, uh, I'll come back to you then. Raj, what about you? Are you experienced people or are you under pressure? yeah uh hi sir yeah uh, so uh, i have uh, six years of experience in other technologies so i just i am looking for the uh, i want to learn some demanding skills in the market so that's the reason i joined in here and what about the other technologies which technology you are working on i work on or okay thanks guys Uh, hi, uh, worked on uh, IBM BPM okay. and a uh, little bit about Pega. Apart okay. from that, uh, some other core technologies such as a .NET and uh, mm -hmm. SQL Server, Server and uh, as a package. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Sriram? Yeah, um, currently I'm working on uh, Core AI uh, and other technologies mm -hmm. like uh, JavaScript and Node.js. So um, I guess uh, some I, I'm not sure. So okay, uh, who can tell me what the BPM? Um, I, I know Sridhar, you you are aware of this BPM and all, right? So I'm just guessing from others. Anyone can tell me what the BPM? Yeah, BPM is business process management. So that's the full form, right? So what definition? Yeah, so like uh, we can uh, by using a BPM, we can automate our uh, daily activities. Sir, can you please? Uh, I mean, do you want to explain something on the BPM? As you are a pretty much experience in Appian, I'm not Appian, Pega and Appian, right? So, yeah, it's just you know to automate uh, uh, business task uh, mm -hmm. to end to end. Uh, wherein we can uh, notify the uh, our um, supervisor to take certain task. Um. Okay. All right. So I'll let, okay. So Sridhar, um, as the name suggests, right, it's a three part: business, process, and management, right? So what the business? Business is nothing but a requirement, right? I mean, what is the requirement a customer has? That is a business for him. Process. How? Every business, every department will have some data, right? And how do you process with that data? That is, you are processing your data, right? In some workflows, like, you know, uh, this is the data I need to pass it to this particular user or this particular group, or uh, right to the database and all. So that's coming to the management. So how you are handling with your data, right? So business process management is nothing but the uh, way of handling the data uh, of the requirement and how you proceed with the as a workflow, right? So in Java and all that, we don't have something called like a workflow. We jump to the one screen to other screen uh, based on the calls and all. But in a, uh, in BPM, we define the workflow and we define the sets. Okay, uh, based on the listen where it needs to actually uh, the data in how the data should be flowing within the application. All right. So that is what I want the business process management. I let me quickly share my screen and we'll talk about the Appian. So um, how you guys have uh, heard about the Appian? I mean, if you are, if you know about it from that in your company, they are working on your colleagues might, might have been working on, right? Yeah, some of my friends are working on this. It's a low code uh, platform. Correct. Quickly, we can we can come up with the application uh, with some uh, business logic. Oh yes, exactly. And so low like maintainable, yeah. Exactly, exactly. So you know, Appian is the very highly demanded in the market now. And it's the low code platform. When I say low code, what do you mean by low code platform? Anyone can tell me what's the low code platform? Low code platform is not certainly no code platform. Uh, it's no. very minimum code uh, to enhance or the develop a certain application so as to exactly. need your business requirements. Exactly. Yes. So don't confuse with the low code and uh, it's the same as a no code. Definitely there will be some code uh, for you to configure. You know, uh, because without code, I mean, it's not 100% uh, no code platform. It's a, it's a low code. So it's a little bit will be there, low code, and others the drag and drop and some configuration things in Appian. 
okay it's very faster as compared to the other bpm tools like ibm bpm pega and uh, other it's very faster i can be very very faster and you know it it has lot of automate and and you know it, it also has integrated now uh, rpa and blue prism uh, automation anywhere all kind of integrations are also part of this api now we can uh, integrate with all the subjects so agenda will be there like you know we uh, we heard about the bp mnn and then just process management uh, notes and then api so we talked about an api we also talk about the api a uh, market position we'll talk about this, about this and it's a low code and appian right and when appian fits what are the data and processes what are the objects and components architecture so case we'll see and appian walk through and there will be some question and answer session all right so we uh, talk about the bpn notations right so what is the bpm and so a business process model and notation right this is how your workflow will look like when when you will design a process model in your appian so you know this will how it, it will look like your you know uh, designing of a process so it can have multiple tasks script tasks it may have the user input tasks but this is a way like you know, using the gateways and all you will be um, defining your path right which path it's to it's going right and you can you know very uh, cleanly you can uh, divide your process model in multiple sets that you know it, it should be very uh, readability should be very clear and all right so what is a bpm it's a, it's a diagram you know where you use to build an easy to read business process model flow chart so by using seeing this model you can tell me that okay this is a customer who is now uh, uh, going with the offer right on online shopping and then going for the offer like declining the offer accepting the offer and send the payment and then they receive the offer and then invoice is generated and they receive the uh, uh, you know the online shopping discount the good Okay, can you go mute uh, if you're not talking? Uh, I'm hearing echo. Good, cool. thank you. So this is what a process um, BPM and um, so this BPM is basically defined into you know four main groups. That is a flow objects, connecting objects, stream rays, and artifacts. So when we say a, a like flow objects, you know this flow object is defining okay from where to where your uh, your workflow is going. And the containing objects, objects is like you know which objects you are offering, like you know uh, script tasks and yeah, some smart services if you wanna use and all those things. Right? And stream lanes, just to divide your screen into multiple stream lanes. This is nothing. The one section is called one stream lane. So like you know if you have uh, customers uh, in uh, design and then we have a uh, online and like manager design and something like you can divide your know, one process model into multiple stream lanes. And the artifacts. What are the artifacts we are using, like smart services and then some notes and all, right? Door gateway and event, start event and all. So this is all about the BPM. Okay. So what is an appian? So you know, appian is the only uh, recognizable global leader across the multiple enterprises right of now. So it's a low code uh, application development tool, uh, which is very very faster. You know, uh, sorry. About so uh, it's a low code application development that we see that right? you know. Uh, uh, process automation is also there. Intelligent business process management is there, and dynamic case management. It, it consists of everything. You talk, you name name any uh, automation tools, you will you will see it within that game. Okay. Um. So what about the coding concept? You know what kind of code it has. You know, uh, basically, the, the, the first thing uh, when I was a professor, it came to my mind is what kind of code it uses, right? So. Appian uses it, it the Appian entire Appian uh, application has been built within Java. So the code, the concept that you you do some like if condition, like for a looping condition and all, right? That all belongs to the uh, kind of Java concept, right? You know, if you want to have some if condition, then you know you can write right if, and then the first syntax will be the condition. Second, the first is true execution, and then the third is the false execution. Same similar like that. Too. So, uh, like for example, you in Java you use some functions like you know uh, trim function, right? Uh, if you what the trim function is used for, trim function is used for trimming some values. The same function uh, trim is also available within the API, so you can use that as well, right? Now, how friendly user friendly is this API? You know, it can execute on uh, like all the interfaces in name about like you can use in the desktop, mobile, tab, you know. So everywhere the screen fits. 
so it, it it also gives you the live you know view of while designing the interfaces how it will look like on your interface in the desktop how it will look like on your tab and the mobile as well so you can also uh, see this it's very user friendly okay um so there are certain impacts you know uh, in the low code uh, automation so there is the one giant uh, mention called ecvia so in there they have mentioned that you know 12 months clinical trial startup plan are reduced by 1.5 months you know they have built one application which helped them to reduce the timing in like 1.5 months for you know their uh, the previous application what they are working and when they move to this appian so uh reducing reporting time from hours to three minutes you know see is the bear company right they have mentioned that you know uh this appian is so faster that you know the reporting thing that they were taking around an hour now it, they can get it in three minutes so appian is also very uh you know dynamic in generating the reports uh, you can also generate the charts for you like you can name the chart like line chart pie chart um, um you know um, bar chart you can do it in appian you can also export them you can also uh, display the data into the table representation that we call grid in appian and this i mean those are very very fast in appian now um and see the sanofi company they are saying that compliance report generation reduced from 6 days to 5 seconds you know that there was some compliance reporting thing which is now is very very faster like they're saying on 6 days to 5 seconds you can uh, see the difference right forester the big giant who is also saying that it's a lower cost uh, fewer errors much faster execution fewer uh, mundane tasks for employees and ultimately better customer experience so it's very neat and clean interfaces uh, not that zigzag it's very professional interface it also gives you and it's, it's saying that it's not the costing is very low as well because to talk about the pega there had different licensing uh, we need to take it like for Uh, development we have to take different licensing for so branding you have to take a different licensing for database we have to take different licensing but in appian everything comes in one package and and you know it's it's like database within the appian is available uh in designing the uh, in interface is in same package and then we will I, i'll try to showcase to you the how the appian environment looks like all right so that is what uh what this one and then um we see of the market positioning i know uh, appian is that uh, currently is holding the top position uh, in all of the things like process automation low code and case management so it's leader in everywhere so this is the uh, you know one of the uh, surveys report that says that appian is the top as of now in the market for uh, you know using the uh, voice voice of the customers like you know customers feedback and all so appian is the top holding the market in the top Uh, where appian fits you know where appian fits basically so if you want to create your own application like you know a separate application for within appian do no integration with other third party and all appian fits there you know uh, if you want to do some automate your business appian fits there extend your current system to a new process like you know if you are having some existing system which is very large largely built and now you want to move something like from the appian because it's making making slow down your application something like that and if you want to integrate with the appian where you can uh, you know uh, like suppose you want to define okay uh, store the data in my system but some work flows things please move it to the appian you can definitely integrate like ui path and appian will come in between and then sap you can connect with this to sap you can connect to the jboss and all so this extended current system will also possible in appian um if you want to convert your application to the appian uh, like from uh, salesforce to appian pega to appian appian fit there as well you can definitely do uh, all those things in appian cool so automation is a very uh, key feature nowadays right so automation definitely uh, you know um, you don't want have is, is there a certain task which does not have any user intervention to be part of right automation can be there like suppose you want you know synchronize my data uh, at this point of time or uh, you have a set of informations available somewhere right like suppose ldap synchronization you want to do uh, and then you say that there are certain data is available in this particular system at every day 5 o'clock morning uh, i need to and um, the process to be executed in appian and pull all those data from there and synchronize with your appian system 
So you don't have to do anything. You just configure the uh, batch process for that one and it will do every task for you. And certain operations, you know, if you want to do some business calculation, everything it will do it manually. I mean, in, 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 in APN, done by the APN as an app, uh, kind of robotic process, and then it, it will take the decision, whatever you have defined, and then it will process your data. So automation is very, you know, easy and uh, computation is very easy in APN. So database and process. Um, APN is equal to data plus process, as I mentioned, that it has its inbuilt uh, database that we are using. Uh, the front end, it will look like a MySQL. And, but in the server, it is uh, having MariaDB. Okay, and process automation. So uh, differently, we have this process model, and uh, you know, design within the um, uh, we can design within the API itself, uh, which gives you the uh, artificial intelligence as well, and then digital workforce. So all you think you can get, name it, and you will find it within the API itself. Okay. Um. So. If you, if you have a distributed system, right? You know, if your data are available within the multiple, um, you know, uh, multiple systems and multiple databases, and you want to have a unified your data, so how you can unify your data, right? You know, you can get the uh, integration calls, I mean, URLs from uh, digital files from these different different um, systems, right? Like if you have data in Oracle, if you have data in somewhere else. They, they can give you their visual. You can configure that integration object. You can call the data, and then you can unify your data and then process your data, right? So, uh, if you you may have the data on yourself, the uh, this uh, data with other data are there. So you can edit your master data. You can prepare modeling with it, and you can uh, study startup and add up the So, uh, if even you know if your data are uh, distributed, you can collect it in very easy, and you can work with that, right? Okay, so let's move to the next slide. Let's see. Um, um, this is an example. Like you know, this is the interface that you are seeing on here. It's designed within the APN. It's a very neat and clean and very informative experience you can uh, define design on your uh, in APN. So new employee onboarding dashboard. So something it will look like you know this is the dashboard where you have a lot of information available within the screen and then it's very neat and clean. Also you can design some layouts and then you can. So uh, all these things you can see this like these all are reporting that is built in the app and these all are the app and screens. So this is a place. Okay, one more thing that you know in app and there are two kind of interfaces we have. Right, one is the base tempo uh, base interface that is called tempo, uh, where we see you know you will feel like you are working on the app environment. But if you want, you can also move your application to the site uh, where you can see that you know your application is you are working on a web application, which will give you a look and feel like. Uh, like this one that you can see on my screen at the moment. So, uh, very neat and clean and very informative in function you can pull on your screen. And you can also divide your screen to multiple columns, multiple designs. Uh, you name it and you will be able to do it here. Okay, so yes, uh, automation. Definitely, automation is a part of you know, you need to involve the bots. So, you may use the automation anywhere, you may use the UI path, uh, which can create the bots for you. And artificial intelligence, so you can combine all these three to create your own, in, uh, you know, process uh, modeling, and all can be part of your process, and it keeps a very flexible, um, uh, you know, the uh, uh, for you. Cool. So, automate any process with zero code, definitely yes. I mean, why? Because uh, it's all the configurations, uh, like you know. It, the process model what we have to do is the config so don't con uh, confuse in the con uh, uh, configuration and change and uh, the code right in the configuration service the code has been written everywhere like suppose if you want to uh, in java if you want to put some um, data right so i mean if you want to write some data to your database so how do you do that you know um, you have to write some code and all right and mapping you have to the connection has to be linked and then you say you will be able to write the data here everything is configured you just have to configure the, your data to your data store and the database, and then you just map the data what data needs to be done, and everything will be uh, done. You don't have to worry about the code for the connection and all, right? So it's very, um, you know, no code, uh, zero code for uh, for the uh, for the most of the things, and then um, uh, configurations will be there. There will be some bit little bit code. That code is that you know on the interface, like if you want to put some logic, like you know if you want to 
check that your text field should not have null characters and you know some extra characters then you need to put some coding there or apart from that uh, it's uh, no code you don't have to put some coding somewhere cool um so it can also integrate with other systems and manage documents uh, documents i can contain so that can also gives you an inbuilt memory where you can store and capture your documents to you know to keep it so you, whenever you want to pull the document it will uh, you will be able to do that because whenever you store a document in appian it generates an autom uh, uh, unique id for that document so that you can capture in your table for your specific record and based on your record you can pull your uh, you know related document to it yes the coding even if the low code that's 20 times faster for the any custom codes you know and also you don't have to remember each and everything because the name of the function to name any code uh, you know because uh, in code you use multiple functions right all the descriptions are also available within the same uh, coding window so if you are like if you are forgetting what needs to be right here what which parameter needs to be passed here you can immediately see on your description window and you can uh, get your things done Reusable components, yes, definitely. Uh, each and every object in the uh, Appian development, you can reuse it. Like, you know, you, so there are certain objects like we have expression rules, we have process model, we have interface, we have constant. Um, all these things, you know, record, report, you can reuse it for you. I suppose if you have similar kind of application, uh, for example, if you think about uh, the email thing, right? Suppose there's a, you have the kind of process model, which is very generic in nature. Uh, the task of that process model is to send an email capture the data and store it somewhere right but that is the it's a very common it can be a common process so you you design one process model put it into the common object and you can use it uh, for all your other applications as well so re reusability is definitely very um uh, you know uh, convenient in, in appian okay so yeah i mean uh, if you see you know you might have been if not then uh, in Appian is loud not is if Appian is going like anything in this uh, healthcare uh, in this pandemic situation many of uh, you might have seen that in pandemic situation many have lost their jobs but the Appian people they get good hype uh, in the same time you know why because Appian has a, a, you know worked a lot of uh, applications in the healthcare domain and uh, it was very successful and then you know people are very mean to use these appian <laughs> applications so that is what about the appian in name the customer everyone is using now appian for their applications okay um the product demo i, I can show you how the product uh, appian looks like so okay that will be easy for you so let me uh, quickly showcase to you how uh, appian looks like um so you can also have your own Appian uh, designer environment available for you. You just have to log into your Appian community. And then from here, uh, there you can have your Appian instance available for you, which will be uh, free, uh, free of cost. And the only thing is that you don't, you don't uh, active on that environment for like three to four days, that will, got, uh, that will go inactive. You, uh, again, you have to go and activate that. So uh, you can definitely have the designer environment for you. So. <clears throat> Let me show you that how Appian looks like from the beginning. Um, so one of basic users logs in, right? I'm talking about the basic users, uh, like suppose uh, the end users. So this is the what interface they will be able to see. And this is called, so Appian basically gives you four suits, four important suits. The first shoot is the tempo. Uh, this is the tempo after the shoot you can see this, this is the first uh, uh, batch or uh, the bag you can see is after so there's a tempo in the tempo it's having five sub tasks which very one of them is the sub, uh, sub tab one of them is the news where you know you can see the uh, information about the news uh, of your epics and if you are have uh, epics and configured with any news tab one more thing i would like to tell you that in one appian environment you can configure n number of applications so it's not like one appian environment is for the one application you can have multiple applications in one environment appian handles that you have to create the uh, different different applications for that environment i'll show you that as well okay so in the second tab is the task like suppose if there are 
any application, any uh, application, if you want to generate any task or any task assigned to you, you can come to this task tab and you can see this, what are tasks are available for you. The third is the record. So if you have any record built for you, right now, then you will be able to see all your records here. So like for we have one lead details, this record tell, talk about whatever data we have worked upon, whatever records we have created. So all these uh, data will be available within this record. The fourth type is a report. You know, uh, uh, the report is basically gives you the graphical representation of your data. Like suppose if I want to know, like for this application, what are the lead type and what are the number of lead type was uh, raised in the system till now. So if I see this holidays are nine count, uh, maternity leave is a three, and medical leave is like uh, four count, and sick leave is a three. So this is a system. We, you know, we can put your data in the graphical representation. We can talk, uh, show you that what is the percent. If you, if you want, you can also show the data in the percentage wise in the uh, pie chart. Uh, where it says that pending approval is the 94 percent, rejected is the 5 percent. So, and if you click on this link and the data, you can in the tabular format as well. It's very dynamic. Whichever you will click, you will get the data associated with that one. Okay. And then we have a last step called access. So, here <clears throat> this access is basically uh, like, uh, for example, I have an application called lead management system, and that is for applying the lead, right? If I click on element apply lead, it will give me a screen for which employee want to search for you know a lead. I search with that employee, get the result, select the employee, and then proceed with that one. Once you proceed with that, and then you will be able to see that the next screen where you can see all your details. What is the start date? I put the start date, I put the end date, right? And then uh, give the lead type. So all this has been designed in Appian. So uh, you know um, put some reason. And click on submit a lead request will be a new record will be created for this lead request so this is what about this tempo um any questions any doubt here okay i'll take that as a no and then i'll move to the next shoot that is called appian designer so this is the uh, most important shoot which is for the system administrator user for the developer where you actually design your code you know it has if you whatever you are seeing here is the different different applications so like for we were seeing one example for lead management system right so that is here in the lead management system application open this uh application here and you will see all the associated artifacts are designed there you know and you can design your code so what are the objects that we can design for an application we can design a data type data store record type process model interface sites all these things you can create from it here so this is the very important uh, you know, uh, a tab for a developer. Um, it certain sub tabs like objects, users, monitoring, and deployment. So from here you can maintain the. Uh, you can search for an object if you don't know that object belongs to which application. You can directly go to the object tab and you can search it for here. Users tab will tell you that how many users are available within your system. And similarly, monitoring tab is for like you know what, if you generate any process model, if you trigger any action. It will generate an instance for you in the back end so that you can see in your watching tab. And deployment is for like if you want to deploy any object from one application to other, uh, so you will use the deployment tab. Okay, so this was the second tab, uh, suit. The third suit we what we have is called cloud database. As I mentioned, that Appian has its inbuilt database, so that database is here in MySQL and the back end it gives the MariaDB. So can create your table, you can create a function, procedures, views, everything is possible. And it will be very faster. Uh, you, know, as a, you know, you can pull the data from this table to your Appian environment and then work with that data. You can also write, you can also create a view and all. All right. And then we have something called admin console. Uh, the fourth important shoot that is called admin console. This admin console is used to take the branding of your application. It's we used to create the users for you, and it also for like you know some LDAP synchronization and all. So all the things we can do with the admin console tab. Okay, so these are the four important shoots that are available within Appian. So uh, and it which allows you to build an application for you, which is going to be very very faster in one month. I mean you know you can be ready with your big application. One month more than enough for uh, okay. So let's talk about the Appian architecture. So how Appian 
architecture looks like. So, you know, in, if you talk about interfaces, we have tempo and we have sites. So, I, if you remember, I have seen you that, uh, shown you the tempo. Uh, we can also have a site which gives you the uh, way, view of your application, like how uh, the application looks like. We have an embedded interface. Embedded interface is something like, you know, uh, if you are using some Java application and from there you want to see an Appian interface, so Appian also allows you to do, do that and you can get your interface designed to your Java application. Okay, it has a designer where you go and develop your application that I have shown you, and it also has an administration console where you can see actually the configs and tracking of uh, and then everything with that and all other things. If you want to de uh, deploy any plugins and all, all those things you can do it from the admin console. Cool. And so, Appian architecture, as I mentioned, is defined into the basically three parts: it's the interface, and then services, and the data. So, any architecture is defined in the three parts, like you know, the front end, the back end, and the, and the services. So, what is the do? So, in the front end, we have interface, and back end, we have data, and then the services we use. So, what are the services used by the Appian? To name it, you will find it here. So, where APIs is there? If you want to expose your Appian data to the third party, you can use the APIs. It uses the web servers like uh, Apache and then JBoss, uh, Oracle, all servers can be included in here. And uh, yeah, and then if you talk about the data, so we have this Oracle, it, it can be integrated with the Oracle database, MySQL server, MariaDB, and uh, you name the other database for uh, using it. Okay, so file system, as you may, I should remember, I mentioned that, you know, that documents can be stored within the app itself. You don't have to take any separate uh, you know, space in, in, in some other system to get this, uh, you know, to store your files and all, right? So, Appian engines uh, divided into multiple parts where you have the file systems folder where you can actually keep your folders within your application and you can also organize it based on your application files. Okay. Good. Um, so, this is a cloud structure like, you know, um, how Appian works basically. So, you have App and UI it has sale, app server, search server, and everything. Yeah, so this is all about the Appian. Um any like, okay, we'll start the open question and session. So yeah, please go ahead and then ask me the questions. Yeah, uh, hi sir. Uh, so in that architecture, so I can see uh the uh tempo and as well as the embedded so these yeah. those 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 two only users can see right i mean that customers uh they can see only tempo temp embedded right tempo sites embedded anything tempo and sites embedded what is mean but uh embedded sir can you please repeat again so, so if you are using a java application right and in java application you want to see uh like uh, a page of appian like say you want to see the record of this appian. Like suppose if I say so here, like in the records, I have one. Uh, this this is the record, right? This one record I'm saying this appian. You want to see this record in your uh, Java application. So we can configure that as well. So you can once you open your Java application, you can see this uh, page there. I mean the Java application means like uh, so it's like kind of a third party application. Third party. I mean, not only is Java, I'm just giving you an example. Any third party application if you're using like Java or Pega or, or something other, like right? And you want to see one screen of the Appian there itself uh, without any uh, touching going into the Appian, you can do that. Okay, then we can configure Appian anyway, right? Yes, yes. Interesting. Look, there are limitations. Uh, you cannot do anything everything but yeah you can see the record you can see the report uh in your uh you know, in your third party application okay okay so in the designer tab like uh, we can develop that application and yes. administer yes. control yes. there we can create that users and all right yes and creating the users if you want to uh the define any plugins to your environment you can do that uh, if you want to set some settings like what kind of file upload you, I mean, there's a, uh, in Appian we have one component called file upload. Uh, so in, in Appian console you can configure what what type of files you allow you gonna allow them to upload, right? Suppose if there are, your uh, your customer is very restricted, they don't want to upload any uh, let's say uh, zip file, right? So you can restrict in the Appian console. Okay, sir. thanks. Okay. Yes, uh, so, yeah. 
uh, my question is uh, how quickly we can integrate uh, any rest or rest call for example i have a mule service mm -hmm. and how quickly we can integrate that with the apn mm -hmm. so any it's very very fast anymore it's like uh, i'll say two minutes so what you actually, need your is voice is breaking actually will you come close to the microphone please is it clear now uh, yeah somewhat better yeah so what i was saying is that you know it it not take more than two minutes uh, why because uh integration as i said it's a very low code right so every object uh, let me show you that you know uh in appian we have something called uh integration object you, so if uh sorry sorry uh if i ping you one uh, open api url will you be able to show me with this is that open okay i uh, can you i i ping you something in the chart no, no, yeah the reason particularly i asked it since i'm from the ibm baw side uh, so we have uh, two options there in case if you have the swagger it can be done within two minutes if when we don't have the swagger we have to write a uh, java program and uh, we have to export as a jar and then we have to import back to uh, baw then accordingly we have to set the parameters such as a header authentication a request body then we have to make a call i just wonder you know how soon we can do it so okay so in appian we have one object called integration mm -hmm. right this is an integration object is uh, designed so uh, I'm going to create this from the uh, scratch. So I'll say test integration. All right. Uh, store somewhere. So I'll store it in the folder. I'll create. And in this integration, it has a URL. I paste your URL what you have given. Right. Okay. I say it's, it's get method is. Yeah. I get the data. Now you can configure your data as you, as you want and based on your, any structure or something. Can you can you just you know uh, take a one step ahead? Uh, will you be able to parse uh, one of the field? Let's say let's say I wanted I wanted to display there you know maybe the uh, comment let's see if it's called down in the response XML. Okay. Okay. So suppose I have used this uh, integration is done, right? Yes. So you want to you want to pass some data? So let me uh, do one thing. I I have okay. an expression rule. Right? Okay. Okay. Let me do that. I have an expression rule. Here I will call your and I will call the integration object that I have created, right? With your yes. Object. So I'll say local uh, integration data something like that and i'll call your i mean the rule that i have created the integration of data i call it here and then i will just pass it here and then return it here. Okay. Okay. data but this tool I'll get all those data here, but you want to get some specific data, right? So the specific yes, yes, data sir. are available. Uh, you can see it's in the body the structure in the body, right? Body. So I'll say yes. dot result dot body. Right? Yes. So you see I'm getting in the body. Right? And then from here we can pass the data. Okay. Okay. This all we, you can we, see we, our Will yeah. that loop actually? Will that uh, pull all the records? Yeah, it's records pulling all the records. And if you want to, you know, define it multiple uh, sub parts. If you want to get the name, if you want to get the email, you will do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. And, That's a good question. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You're welcome. So I do have another question. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, uh, know how uh, the uh, the clients who are using APN will mm -hmm. extensively use file system. I know, you know, each and mm -hmm. every application requires file system. Do they uh, do? I mean, as for your experience or as far as wherever you work, uh, do they really use APN file system or 
are they really going to uh, some other uh, you know uh, file net uh, any kind of uh, file net source different uh, applications such as file ibm file net or something like that so no uh, till my experience what i have learned and we have seen that you know uh, they are actually using this again file system why because it's very easy to, uh, very quick to uh, you know retrieve the data and uh -huh. It's very manual. Let's suppose you have a, a lot of uh, data available in the record and you want to download the data, right? So, yes. you know, okay, let me showcase that as well. I know if this, you can see this is a record that I have done here, right? So, I can give you the by default system that like export thing. I click on export and the entire data will be get exported to my Excel sheet, you know? So, once the user has, uh, you know, click on the Excel, so it generates the Excel sheet and gives the data for you. The entire data, whatever we have it, we will, we will get in your Excel sheet. So it's very fast and the file system is very easy also in the in the RPM. And you know, uh, it also gives you the separate memory uh, uh, to store that data files in your system and it generates an unique ID for that one. So suppose if for one record you are, you are uploading one file, it will generate a unique ID for that one. So wherever you want to uh, paste that data, based on that unique ID, you will be able to paste it very quickly. Mm -hmm. So people are using, I mean, customers are using this uh, inbuilt uh, file system. Okay. The reason why I particularly ask is, let's say, if any insurance company, right, they do get mm -hmm. a lot of uh, documents, very lengthy document in terms of the size and the number of documents also. So uh, the company where I was working, uh, usually mm -hmm. the document will come uh, in one of the application and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, any, so let's say, Guideware or .NET application, what mm -hmm. they do is they will pass on to uh, IBM data cap. And data ca cap will classify, you know, whether it's a legal documents or the, you know, attorney documents or the rental invoice, medical document, then it will be given to file net. It will be in the compressed secured format. And as and when user requests for the document, again, a rest call will be made and according to the document will be displayed. I just wonder, you know, that kind of capability, the this inbuilt file net system has. Uh, no, the inbuilt file system will be storing the file within you, uh, within the uh, in, uh, in the appian right and if you want to do some uh, like uh, um kind of check right if the file is valid or not and then all those things right uh security and all so you can also do that all kind of things and if you also have designed one idp intelligent document processing uh application which is uh you know available in the app market you can download that and you can use that same it's a very common it's very handy if you pass any kind of uh, file and it will be uh, doing all those things so if, as you also mentioned, it's right, a very huge file and large file. If that is the case, right? I definitely, I mean, right. certain has some limitations, right? So uh, if that is the case, you can definitely show you all your files to your and any other file system, external file system, you can do that as well in that case. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, I do have, sorry, I, I do oh, have sorry, uh, sorry, one. Yeah. Uh, one one more general question. Um, uh, no, I know it's a very uh, looks simple, but I just wanted to understand uh, the all the uh, UI elements say mm -hmm. something like a sections, vertical section, mm -hmm. horizontal, and uh, uh, various tools as a button, radio button, tab, mm -hmm. every uh, the you know the table. All those things will be easily. It can be just uh, drag and drop yes, by setting the drag properties. And drop. It's drag and drop. I can show you that as well. You know, once you can. So okay. let's say I want to design an interface. I go and I design an interface, right? And uh -huh. so let's just paste uh, store into the uh, interface folder. All right. So let's just create. All right. So it will give you the panel where you can design your interface. Um, the panel, right? So in name it and you said a section layout. So I say a section layout, I drag it and drop it here. As soon as you define, I say column layout. All right. So I want to define this section into multiple columns. I drag this and then define it. Yes, it will be done to multiple columns, which is here. Uh, if you want to put within the section, you can put it here as well. So the section is just one multiple column. If you want to have text field, so uh you can do that message you can draw this up here. So text is there. Now you want to set radio button. Uh, so date and date field. So the date field is here. Right? If you name it, it's a drag and drop. Radio button is here, right? So radio button is here. So radio button. Okay. And uh, how what about a pop-up uh, window? 
uh, Appian doesn't give you any pop-up window, uh, but there is a one pop-up window concept in the related actions. If you in the record, uh, just like this one, uh, like suppose if I open any particular record, and then I want to uh, perform some action on this one. So this uh -huh. is what we can get it. This kind of pop-up, like you know. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, okay, okay. But so but if so in any any yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, please. So if you want any any like Java X kind of thing, you know, pop up like kind of um, notification, notification that is not possible. But if we do have one pop up on if you click on any action, like if you click on button, then we can have one pop up. Are you do you uh, are you sure you want to proceed? Yes, no. That kind of pop up we have. Okay. Uh, hmm. Okay, and uh, you said like when we say you know uh, wherever we require when we have to come up with the, some code, where do we write the code? Okay, so you see if we have designed the interface. So this is the design mode, right? Huh. And then like suppose I want to put some validation, like you know this text field should not be more than uh, five characters long. So you, you click on expression mode, you will be able to see all the code has been written over here, and whatever you want to do, you need to send for this. Uh, okay, I uh, can I go ahead with one more question, please? Yeah, please. please. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, this is a question, uh, something to do with the, some kind of a, a realistic uh, scenario. Let's yeah. say, uh, you know, um, uh, you, uh, you are uh, creating a, some uh, record, okay, uh, through mm -hmm. the user interface. Let's say you are, uh, uh, you are creating some uh, lead, 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 okay, and mm -hmm. uh, that lead record has mm -hmm. to assign to uh, mm -hmm. one particular user, depending on some X, Y, Z rule. My question to you is, where should I define X, Y, Z rule? For example, if the leads are created from uh, California, I wanted to assign the lead to one of the team member from team A. If it is coming from Texas, it should assign one of the team member from uh, team two. So, uh, so, so th that kind of rule, where should, where can be accompanied here, like in this uh, okay. the application? Okay. So you see, we have designed a process model, right? And this process model is for the applying the leave. So whenever we yeah. apply a leave, right, for particular user, if you remember, I've given you one example, like I, I want to apply a leave for this as employee, we search for an employee, and then we are deciding that one. So there is a manager approval thing here, right? So I have a database related table mentioned. Where I can mention that okay for this particular employee you should be you must be having some uh, relation mapping somewhere right either your data store or on some your uh, document or some your expression book somewhere right so that that you're saying this is the Texas these are the set of employees this is the uh, Arizona these are the set of the employees right so likewise we have a mapping in the database for this employee he is the manager so here if you go to the manager approval task um, process model I'm here I'm declaring on a script task and this is script task I'm trying to get the based on the employee who is my manager and I'm assigning this task to my manager. So all of these things you can do in your process model as well and interface as well you can define who is gonna be your person who the task is going to be assigned. Yes, uh, thank you for that information. Can uh, can you go to the get to manager service? Actually, that is, that is where exactly you are uh, trying to find out the employees manager, is it? Um, get manager, no, that's not a service, that's a script task. Once again. Yeah, this is a script task where I have written the rules. In this rule, oh, what we're okay. doing is that uh, it's, it's, you know, I'm passing this uh, employee ID and based on the employee ID, I'm trying to fetch who is the manager for this employee from the database. So in my oh, database, okay, in my database, I have a table uh, defined, which has the relationship with employee and uh, yes, I got it. LMS employee manager relationship, right? So here I'm yes. passing this employee ID and getting the manager ID, and from here I'm I know that okay, now next the manager task mm. should be assigned to this particular user. Yes. 
no it really makes sense thank you for that and uh, can we can we connect a store procedure directly to this uh, where yes. you have task yes, uh, script can, right we can, we can, yes we can do that so for that we have a smart function called uh, execute store procedures Oh nice. Can oh yeah. Oh okay. So whatever the store procedure returns a value that you can I can pass that value to send email. Yes, definitely. Close. You can okay. do anything. Okay. 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 Okay
because i see uh, i'm got confused you know whether which one to go with even outsource uh, out system also you know booming and appin also doing good and uh, i see some I, i mean i person didn't like pega but uh, i got a chance to work for a while with the pega so yeah uh, i learned pega uh, while while working on one of the project uh, but did not get a chance to you know spend more time but yeah i have some fair idea so compared to uh, these uh, you know uh, technologies how do you evaluate in i am talking about not with the, you know uh, in terms of ease or you know quick time but i'm talking about in terms of the job market that is where i'm keen to uh, keen to know okay. so it's not as what is happening you know many customers uh, Name the customers I see: Nova, Equivia, Barclays, uh, Bank of America, uh, First Republic Bank. All these giants, HSBC. HSBC is like you know they are converting each and every application of their to APM. That is how demand level is happening in the market because it's very easy. You know, uh, you customers are asking, "Can you give me a demo in two days?" This is my requirement. Yes, we can. You know, an APM is ready with a one, uh, one demo for them. It's that faster. So many customers are now converting their old applications, like which is in uh, Pega or Salesforce, and they are going to the uh, uh, converting to the APM, integrating with the APM. Okay. And out comes you said that our society right? that is also booming. Yes, but that will take a lot of time because right now they are doing what APM has done, like five years back. So. Mm -hmm. so uh, so uh, so when you say job market you are referring to globe right like us also yes 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 there we go okay okay in europe also fm is expanding like anything it's a us product but uh, uh, what is the european uh, bank right yes london so that, is, that they are using fm a uh, lot and uh, while during this training do you have something in your mind as far as uh, project work is concerned for us to get you know uh, so see uh, i don't go topic wise i take uh, i take a use case like for you see the sleep management system right that is the one of the use case that i'm taking for the current batch so okay likewise for if you guys join then i'll take some of the use case so you know how why i'm using use case that you will be able to connect it uh, i have seen yeah. many many candidates have uh, left the other uh, training and joined my training because you know they are able to connect okay these objects can be used here if you go for a use case right so i go for a use case so we'll decide one of the use case and then we we'll go with that okay yeah i don't have any more questions uh, thank you very much i really appreciate your patience and detailed explanation oh. um so yeah uh, priyam simi murli uh, if you have any questions you can i will leave it to others for uh, to come up with any questions if yeah, they have i guess uh, i think your question has covered or your question has covered So, yeah. Okay. So, Raj, any more questions from you? No, sir. Uh, I am good as of now. Okay, then. Uh, if there are no questions, then we can wind up the call. Uh, hope you will join. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much.